Hey guys, it's Todd with Commercial Tracks. Listen, uh, I am back. Uh, we're doing another video today, and it's been a minute since I uh, put out any content, but we're going to do our best to try to keep content coming your way uh, so that those of you that are trying to get involved in this music library game uh, are getting some of the information that helps you to navigate through that, make sense of some of the things that are going on, right? Uh, so today, I want to talk to you briefly about production music. So if you're just getting involved, trying to understand the terms and understand what they're talking about when they're using these different terms like production music, library music, stock music. What do all of these things mean, right? Uh, so those terms are actually kind of interchangeable and just depends on who you're talking to and what they're talking about. Uh, and you'll hear those terms being used. But basically, production music is the term that I typically use when I'm talking about it. And it just means music that has been pre-produced uh, and is living with a library or a number of libraries somewhere so that people can license it, customers can license it and use it to sync it to film or video, YouTube videos, you know, Vimeo, whatever it might be, corporate videos, you know, uh, whatever they may be using to try to help convey the messaging that they have. So this is what production music is used for. Uh, for us as composers, as musicians, as beat makers, it's great for us because this is a way that we can license the music that we create, a way to earn revenue or earn income uh, off of those tracks instead of having them just sitting on your computer somewhere and not being utilized at all. For the most part, where we professionally get those tracks used is within music libraries or if they are being used to sync them to film. Now, Production music is a little bit different from music that you would score for, um, uh, for say a, a a film or a um, something cinematic, right? Those types of arrangements, it's something that's utilized specifically for the scene, right? So you're writing more so creating a mood for the visuals that are on screen. Production music is more like an arrangement that follows more so in, in alignment with the song, right? So it feels more like an intro, uh, a verse, a chorus, or a drop. At the end of the day, it's music that's being licensed for television, for advertising, YouTube videos. Doesn't really matter because for us as writers, composers, beat makers, or what have you, I'm just trying to license the music. Some of you might be thinking, well, I only want to license my music for film and television, right? I'm not so much interested in licensing my music for uh, YouTube videos or advertising cap campaigns or corporate videos and things like that. And that's perfectly fine, right? Uh, but just understand that all of these are different ways in which you can license your music. As you continue to try to source places to license your music, uh, you will find out that being as diverse as possible, it's, it's helpful, right? So definitely, you know, I want you to pursue those things that are most interesting to you because that's the thing that's going to keep you going and, and help you to, you know, stay interested in what you're doing. Uh, for me, in my career, uh, it has been helpful for me to diversify, right? Uh, I have placed in uh, independent films. I've gotten placements with theme parks. I've gotten placements with TV commercials. You know, all of those things are good things. And listen, when the check cashes, the check cashes, right? For me, whether it be royalties or what have you, I want to earn a living using my music and I'm sure if you're watching this video, that's what you want to do as well. So you want to be as diverse as you possibly can, in my opinion, right? Uh, and uh, so that's kind of my take on it. Uh, but you do what you what you think is best. And listen, you've got thoughts about it, you know, share them in the comments. Uh, other people that are watching the video, they may, you know, be interested in kind of your viewpoint on things. And so I think that's cool. And so, but at any rate, uh, we're talking about production music and understanding what that term means and what it means for us as composers trying to get our music into uh, various music libraries and things of that nature. So many of you watching this video might be asking the question, is my music or do I have music that works well for a production music library? Uh, my answer for that question is if it's good music, let's start there, then it would be good music to be used in a music library. Now, whether or not they're going to license the type of music that you have or, or that you are um, that you like to produce, that's a different story. So studying the library and finding out whether or not your music fits into a genre or a category uh, that they would use, uh, that's that's the research that you're going to have to do, right? You know, good music is, is still good music. It doesn't matter the genre or the style that you're, that you're using. 
uh, it still has to follow a few rules, right? You know, whether or not melodies work and whether the composition, you know, works well together and that it has a vibe to it or a feel to it that still is received as good music. Uh, and trust your ears when it comes down to that stuff. You know, I tell people all the time, you've been listening to music for a while, so trust your ears in that regard. But as it relates to music libraries, they are or they can be, you know, specific about the types of music that they may be looking for to try to market for their customers. Customers. So you do have to keep those things in mind uh, when you're trying to figure out whether or not I have music uh, that works well. So uh, if you're interested in doing, say, you know, um, trap music or R&B or urban music, you would have to try to find libraries that utilize those things. Uh, if your music is more so acoustic driven um pop music, you know, you, you just, you, you find those things that you're interested in doing and find the libraries that might like that type of music. So uh, don't limit yourself and don't think that your music needs to fall necessarily into a specific category. If you find that you do things that are somewhat unique and you don't find a lot of libraries have that style of music, that might be what makes you unique. Uh, and there's nothing wrong with that. Um, you might search for boutique libraries, smaller libraries that are trying to grow their catalogs and you might uh, find a place for that, uh, for your music in some of those genres, if it's not that your music would necessarily fall specifically into a common category uh, that you might see on music library sites. You know, usually when you look for genres on a music library, you can go through and you can find specific types of genres that are probably fairly common. The reason that those genres are common is because it's not because uh, the library is necessarily looking for things that are common, but Think in terms of the end user. A lot of times the end users that are looking for the music to source in a video, they may be video producers and things like that. Uh, someone that's just in the place of approving the music, but they may not be musicians. They, they may not know a lot about all of those things. All they know is what sounds good to them and what seems to work well for their video, right? So uh, music libraries will use genres and styles of music that are easily defined and categorized by an end user who may or may not be a musician, right? And very oftentimes they probably aren't musicians, right? And so, uh, you know, they're just using terms that are common, using terms that are easily uh, defined uh, by the general public, right? And so this is why those terms are often used. So don't get discouraged if you don't feel that your music necessarily fits the mold of what you typically see in a music library. Understand the library is still trying to market to the general public and the general public is not musicians, right? They're not composers, they're not producers. So keep those things in mind when you're trying to determine whether or not your music would fit a library or not. So when you enjoy what you're doing, that's going to translate to good music, well-produced music. Uh, it's gonna increase your chances of licensing that music. Now, something else that I wanna talk about, you know, kind of on the tail end is of figuring out whether or not my tracks would fit well for a music library. It's a term that I came up with where I kind of call things sort of like a hybrid track. They are tracks where the music may fit a particular mold. Uh, so maybe it's a uh, corporate music or maybe it's something that might be turned more so in the realm of popular music. Uh, but I have styles of music that I kind of like or I prefer. So let's take, for instance, something that's very recognizable, like in trap music. In trap music, you recognize, uh, you know, kind of like the beat, the feel of the vibe, uh, the hi-hat pattern. Uh, it's something that's easily recognized. So even though uh, I may have a track that's more so of a corporate track, I may put influences from another genre that I might be interested in, right? And what you're doing is you're kind of creating these hybrid tracks wherein the track kind of fits more than one genre, which makes the track marketable in more than one genre. You've got to think in terms when you're dealing with music libraries that if there's an overabundance of a particular type of, type of track, they may not be looking for more of that music, not because yours is bad, but just because they have enough of it, right? Uh, but when you can get more creative about the tracks that you're creating, then you can kind of uh, integrate uh, music or tracks that have influences from other genres, then that makes that piece of music a little bit more interesting. And sometimes those things will help your track to kind of stick out. And I think that's a cool way to try to write tracks. And so I will do that a lot and kind of come up with sometimes these hybrid types of things that uh, that would fit in more than one category. I need to produce a certain amount of content that's, uh, that would fit well and that fits the mold. 
And there needs to be a certain amount of my content that is unique, right? So that I can stand out from the crowd, right? Striking a balance between what we produce and what we create. I can understand what my target market is and I can write for this particular genre or this particular mood. At the same time, I'm learning how to write and stand out from the crowd and be unique when I need to be unique as well. All right, now here, I think it's a good way to kind of segue to, as you're writing production music, understanding the different places that may utilize that music. You've got things like ad agencies, corporate videos, YouTube channels, promotional videos, games, sound design companies, businesses, corporate in-house production companies, independent video production companies, music libraries, television production companies, local, regional, and national business advertising, local, regional, and national television programming. All of these are different ways in which your production music could be utilized. If you don't have these connections established uh, already, you're starting out and that's where most people who come and find this video are going to be coming from, a place of starting out in this industry. Uh, the music libraries are sometimes the best place to start there because they've already established a reputation and so it's easier for companies to source their music through reputable music libraries as opposed to uh, doing it directly. That being said, doesn't mean that it doesn't happen. Uh, uh, I have gotten placement with theme parks and, and things like that. And some of that stuff has been direct uh, connections, you know. Um, so don't rule those things out. My first uh, inroad into writing for a theme park was actually a direct connection. I happened to meet the person responsible for this company that was a producing music for theme parks. They happened to source music through a company that I was writing for. And so my first way into actually a theme park was actually writing directly because uh, I met this person and they found out that I wrote for the library. Uh, and then they hired me to write directly for a, a few exhibits at this theme park. And so that was how I got involved in that particular thing. So don't rule those things out, but understand that the music libraries do play an important role, especially if you've not established a reputation for doing that type of work. All right, now let's talk a little bit about popular music versus production music. And when I say popular music, I'm just talking about music that's just out there and popular right now versus production music. So you might be thinking, you know, should I produce the type of stuff that I hear on the radio or that I in my Spotify playlist that I like listening to right now, uh, you know, or what have you. Right. So typically, you know, you want to produce the type of music that you're genuinely interested in producing because, you you know, people can tell if I'm listening to something that you're just creating, but you don't have an enjoyment for what you're doing, right? So uh, if it's popular and you enjoy it, then write that music, produce that music, compose that type of music, right? Uh, if it's, you know, if it's not popular, then that's okay, right? Because uh, the general rule of thumb that I've found actually is that production music sort of follows popular music. What is popular today seems to become popular in production music four or five years later. And so I've just found out that if you kind of keep an eye on what's sort of underground right now in a way, uh, in four or five years, it'll probably start to trickle its way or find its way into advertising uh, campaigns and things of that nature, right? It's a good way for you to kind of predict what may be coming up in the future, right? So, uh, but, but understand that first and foremost, do what you like to do create the type of music that you like to create, right? Uh, because that's what's going to translate best to the audience. One other thing that I would mention briefly about production music is keep in mind that with production music, very oftentimes the idea is that the music is going to take the back seat to whatever is being advertised, right? Production music needs to be centered around how does it play in the background? How does it keep the viewer interested without distracting from the voiceover uh, in the information that's being conveyed, right? So you can't have a bunch of, you know, solos and stuff like that uh, that distract from the messaging that's going on. So that's why a lot of times production music is somewhat laid back uh, in, in a way. Uh, and maybe laid back is not the best term, but it's created in such a way to where it does not get in the way of the voiceover or the messaging uh, that the product is being sold. So your music is actually being used to help to sell a product, right? You learn how to create tracks that support 
but don't overtake the messaging that's going on in the video. You have to keep those things in mind uh, when you're creating production music. Sometimes companies are they're listening to your track to try to determine, can I use this track for voiceover? Or is, is, or is the track so busy that I can't really utilize it there? For instance, say somebody has a course and they're teaching a course and they're trying to source music that they can license and use for their course. Well, they're talking in their course and they're trying to teach something or they're trying to convey something. And so they don't want uh, the music that's being utilized to be so overbearing that it takes away from their voiceover content, right? So they're going to bypass your track right away if your track is so busy uh, or there's so much going on that it distracts from uh, their own messaging, right? So keep in mind that now, you know, with this production music, I'm trying to put music together that will work well or that will work in conjunction with something else, right? I'm syncing it to video and my track isn't taking the spotlight their content is taking the spotlight. My track is just supposed to keep people interested in the content that they're conveying. So things like that are what you got to think about when you start to put together and produce production music. The last thing that I would say is listen frequently and often, you know, to, to commercials, to TV shows, hear where your music would fit into some of those things so that your music is not just sitting on your computer, but that it's being utilized someplace and you're earning uh, royalties or licensing fees uh, from that music that you're producing, right? So I hope that this helps a little bit. Uh, if you like the video, like, subscribe, turn on notifications, and we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.